good morning. Um, so today I have something new to talk about with you. Sorry if I'm looking over here. I am looking at my computer. I have some links I want to share with you and they're on my computer, which is over here. And anyhow, um, and I guess my tripod's kind of not even, but it's never perfect, right? At least today, my children probably won't be interrupting us. I can't promise. Um, the baby is still sleeping, actually. She's been up late recently because I didn't know this, but in the Pacific Northwest, it is daylight until almost 10 o'clock. I think last night it was 9.47, and it was still light enough that we could walk down the street. Good morning, buddy. The kids are slowly, slowly coming out. So it's light from about 5.30 in the morning until almost 10 o'clock at night. And it's hard to put a two-year-old to bed when it's light outside, isn't it? So she is sleeping in late today. I'm going to try to see if I can cut down on the glare on my glasses. There we go. So, um, for, hey Liam, you want to say hi? Liam, my little buddy who's normally in the videos with me, is is right next to me. He's pretending to be tired, but the truth is he's been up playing Xbox for several hours, haven't you? Actually, no, we've got 20 minutes. 20 minutes. We got an Xbox this weekend. So before I begin, I have to say something. I would I would never forgive myself if I didn't. Um, this past weekend, there was a massacre in my hometown. I am from Orlando, Florida. Not I was not raised there, but I moved there when I was 20 years old. And I spent 20 years there. And the fact that this happened has devastated me because it's my city. But not only that, it's because my children were a direct target. I don't normally, you know, talk about this because it's so, you know, so normal to us. But I have children who identify as LGBT. And the fact is, they could have been there. They weren't because we moved several months ago. We left Orlando in December. My children were a target, and that, that brings it home to me. You can see things like this happening on TV. You can see, you know, the Paris attacks happening on TV. And you think, oh, that's horrible. That's awful. What can I do to help? But in this instance, children like mine were the target. So what can we do to help? Um, I have three resources for you to help to, there's Garrett, say good morning, Whoa. to directly help the Orlando LGBT population. First, if you make purchases at Amazon, do it through their SMILE program. When you go through Amazon's Smile program, a portion of all the sales support the charity of your choice. Um, the one I am going to recommend is the Zebra Coalition of Orlando, Florida. They are a safe space for LGBT children and they help LGBT youth who have been kicked out of their homes find a safe place to stay. They have resources, they have counseling, they have um, social activities. So it's smile.amazon.com, type in Zebra Coalition and it'll pop up. Another one, good morning, Tricia. Another one is the Orlando Youth Alliance and the Lakeland Youth Alliance. They are part of uh, the same organization. Sorry, my, my husband's texting me again. I, I need to figure out how to turn my texting off while I do this. Um, OrlandoYouthAlliance.org, LakelandYouthAlliance.org. Um, we are familiar with both of them. My children have participated with both of them. Um, Orlando Youth Alliance is kind of the bigger one, and then Lakeland works with them. And if it wasn't for the, the Lakeland Youth Alliance, I don't know where we would. You can't see or hear a text on this. Oh, yeah, it just popped up because I turned the volume off. And my husband asked me if I wanted this, like, second refrigerator, and I do. But he's not watching right now. So I'll have to text him when I'm done. So those are three things that you can do that won't hurt you much. 
you can donate to Orlando Youth Alliance or spread the word and let the community know that they're there. The same with Lakeland Youth Alliance, if you happen to be more towards Polk County or Tampa. Smile.amazon.com for the Zebra Coalition. They all three of those organizations directly help the LGBT population in Orlando and surrounding areas. Um, if you can't do that, if you are in the area and you can foster animals, there are pets that no longer have owners. There are um, veterinarians that are donating services. There are churches that you can help that are donating free memorial services. JetBlue is offering free airfare to family members to get to Orlando and back for funeral services. So do what you can. Spread love. I don't, I don't want to talk about bathrooms anymore. I don't want to talk about the name of the man who did this or why he did this. It's very important, but we need to spread love for my children and for your children. Your children may not be LGBT like some of mine are, but they're going to grow up with my children. And we just, we need to make this world a safer place. So, coffee break. You always take coffee breaks. I do always take coffee breaks. You want to say hey to everybody? Take coffee breaks off camera, on camera, every, every hour. Yeah. I'm using my husband's mug today. Look, it's Wally. See? We hit a sale at the uh, Disney store. And, you know, being from the Orlando area. You're shaking the tripod, Bobby. Being from the Orlando area, we are kind of big Disney freaks like look see I mean I have a Disney tattoo on my arm my husband has a matching one it's Mickey with a blue heart so all right let me get these links down here you're shaking the table please be very careful okay see when I got a um tripod I was debating on a floor model or a table model and I was worried that if I got a table model this would happen People would shake the table. But I was worried if I got a floor model, people would walk by the floor model and the whole thing would go over. So I got the table model, which I guess, you know, isn't necessarily the best thing. So anyhow, Wally, we, we found this sale uh, clearance on mugs for like $3 at the Disney store. He got Wally. Well, I got Wally for him. He didn't get to pick. And um, I got Bambi. And it's cute because it has ears. The mug has ears that come out and the little nose is 3D and sticks out. All right, so we're going back to this art curriculum for teens. Okay, there are two different types of these programs available. Um, the one I happen to have is for 16 plus. Um, yes, younger kids can use it, but it was designed for children who are older. There is also one for teenagers who are 12 to 16. This is, oh, let me Design move this. Design Studio Design, Design Pro. Studio Pro. And I'm kind of gonna unbox it here for you. <laughs> Oh, these allergies are killing me, guys. They're supposed to be I better. Took some, they're supposed to be better, right? My nose is so itchy. I took some Benadryl earlier, and um, maybe if I can get out of the way. It's not really helping. Well, it's better All right, Design right. Studio Pro. The Pro is how you know it's for the older children. If it says Design Studio, it's for younger teens and preteens. It's by the Extraordinaires. Now, this is is going to run you about $80. It is available on Amazon. It is available at bookstores. I recently saw it this past weekend at Barnes & Noble for $79. If you go to Timberdoodle, oh, there's my Bambi mug. Yeah, right, close to yeah. If you go to Timberdoodle, and there's a link um, up in the uh, description, and I'll put another link in here, you can get it for $75. So you're gonna save yourself a couple of dollars. So. Design Studio Pro. Put that down. I'm gonna move my computer here. Liam, be careful. I'm putting my computer on this chair right next to me, okay? Yeah. So let's do a little bit of an unboxing of this Design Studio Pro. Let me move this so you can see. Um, I have artists in my family. Um, my husband comes from a family of artists. His dad is a professional artist. His uncles, his brother, they're all very good artists. Um, and some of my children, most of my children, um, really enjoy art and are very accomplished in it. My 17-year-old, he's my second child, 
is an art major. He uh, started dual enrollment back when we lived in Florida and did art classes. He started when he was 14. Um, in Florida, you could start dual enrollment in community college as young as 12. But when he started, it was 14. And as an art major, he was getting 98, 99, and 100 in his art classes, where the uh, 20 and 21 year olds, you know, weren't doing as well. So he's, he's pretty good at art. And then my 13 year old also has uh, quite the propensity for art. She is always drawing, and my younger kids always have a sketchbook. So this is what interested me so much about this. Uh, the Design Studio Pro teaches kids design and there's enough in here for an entire year worth of art curriculum and it's really unique because um, art is kind of hard there's so much you can do um, when they're younger you can recreate masterpieces you can um, you know experiment with different mediums but as they get older it's harder to fill that need not everybody has the dual enrollment option like my son does um, I'm not an artist. My husband is, is not a professional artist. We don't live near a family that is. So we have to find ways to provide unique art, something they haven't done before, something they're you know not tired of. So that that's where this comes in, Design Studio Pro. You're shaking the table, son. Be very, very careful, okay? So what it is, is you solve real life challenges um, from products, clothing, architecture, and vehicle design. The client, you develop empathy skills by designing for extraordinary characters with human needs. That's neat. Wait till you see. The process, you practice user-centered design by following our process of research, design, and improve. In the design, you sketch and proudly present your wildly imaginative designs. Now, we're going to have a blog post up at Homeschool Game School about this soon. My kids are going to use it, and they're going to try it for a week or two, and then we'll give you an update. And then as they pro progress through the year, through the summer, we'll give you even more updates. So, let's open this, and you can see what it's like. It's a big box and it is full. The first thing you see is design the extraordinary. So this is your, I think your brother really wants you to see what he has. Garrett is playing some kind of video game and is very excited to show Liam what he has. All right, so we have, this is the visual guide to using the Extraordinaire's Design Studio Pro to develop a user-centered mindset. So this basically is the textbook. It's thin, it is, does it have a number of pages in here? 120 pages, right, full color. So what this book does is it explains what you're gonna do. There is a section on how to use this book. He's playing Subnautica. Some Contents. There's a foreword. This a page about why they made this. And it says they reviewed the skills and they wanted to cover divergent thinking, problem solving, multiple outcomes, making connections, discussion skills, presentation skills, self-expression, evaluation of ideas, giving feedback, cooperative, or I'm sorry, collaborative work, and empathy. And it says, I'm just kind of scanning it here for you. Instead of using regular person people as personas, I decided to use the storybook characters that children are familiar with. I thought it would be fun to design things for a pirate, a superhero, a robot, or a fairy. The larger than life nature of these characters would allow us to amplify real human needs. There would be no ordinary personas. They would be extraordinary. They would be the extraordinaires. So then it explains the personalities and how it's used and centered. And uh, there's a whole page here about empathy and needs. Because when you work for and with other people, it's very important that you can understand where they're coming from, their approach. So it, it kind of helps with that. And then it tells you how to play, set up. And then step one, which is prepare your design challenges. Step two, research. Step three is design. Step four is improve. Step five is name it. And it's all written here in this little flow chart. This is 
really wonderful for the visual child, which, you know, most artists are because it's all high interest pictures with a short amount of text. Then it gives you an example, and the example it gives you here is a scooter that was made for a sorcerer. And then you meet the extraordinaires. So in this section of the book, you actually are going to meet the people, the pers personas that you're going to be designing for. There is an alien, and it gives you all the background information on the alien, so you know what they need and how to design for them. Astronaut, circus acrobat. I know a couple of them in real life. You do? I do. Our, if you are in Central Florida, you want to join Mid-Florida Homeschoolers. It is the coolest group ever. We have the coolest people, Ava. including two families who are full-time travelers, and they are acrobats and circus acts. There's, really? um, yeah, there's the Loyal family. They are, like, world famous for their circuses, and they are touring right now with a, a circus. I forget the name of it. And then we have another family. It's Deanna and her family. They do the family circus, and they have a blog. I'm going to have to contact her and get her blog link and share it with y'all. Um, they're just two of the fascinating people in this group. Um, we have nurses like Trish there who's watching. I love you, Trish. We have nurses. We have a member who in the 90s followed the Lilith Fair circuit and um if you were like me in the 90s you were a big music nerd and to meet someone who toured with lilith fair oh my goodness her name is deidre right she is one of the most fascinating people i know <laughs> if you're in orlando go to palmer's garden go see deidre and tell her meg said hi yeah, so we have some really cool people in the group, and it's a very accepting and open group, accepting of anybody, if you're religious, if you're secular, if you're LGBT, if you're straight, if you're, you know, if you're in the area, and if you homeschool or want to learn about homeschooling, Mid-Florida Homeschoolers are on Facebook and Yahoo. Facebook is a little bit more active. It's a lot more active. They're fantastic people, and I miss them dearly. So anyhow, we have circus acrobats that got me off on the tangent. We have a dwarf. Dwarf. We have an evil genius, and if you look, let me give you a good look there. It's a nice picture, and then the description. It said, and oh, and also says why they created the evil genius because we wanted to provide the opportunity for over-the-top design. Designing for evil genius means letting go of conventional design limitations and letting the imagination go wild. What? Please close my computer. Close my computer. You could go do your math over there if you want. No, sorry. Okay. We have a fairy. It's probably going to be my 13-year-old's favorite. Future child. This is interesting. An extraordinaire from the from a future civilization gives the scope to imagine new technologies. We created a child to balance the number of adult personas we had developed. This gives a different focus to design solutions. And that is neat. Being able to know what they were thinking when they created this character is pretty cool. And we have a giant, a knight, mermaid, merman, ninja, pirate, rap star, robot, snow queen, storage almost full okay well if my video cuts off it might be because my storage is almost full I just cleared my pictures out the other day that's weird okay Snow Queen let it go let it go just kidding okay um, a soldier spy superhero time traveler Tribal child, for those of you just joining us, we are talking about Design Studio Pro. It's a unique art curriculum for children, 16 plus, that teaches them the uh, hows and whys of modern design. 
a vampire teen. Ooh. Of course, next, werewolf. Wizard. All right, and then design you get to your projects. design projects. So the deal is you pick a character, right? And they have in here character cards. You can pick randomly, you can pick blindly, you can pick, you know, on purpose, whatever. Anything Would you go get me a pair of scissors? Thank you. So here are the character cards. You just pick a character. So let's say we're going to pick Tribal Child. I didn't see that one. I must have skipped that page. No, we did that oh, one. Oh, here's another one. Wait. No, here's Knight. Let's pick, Mom. let's pick, let's pick Mermaid. I like mermaids. You did do Tribal Child, but then you um said two people now joining us. Oh. Okay, so we're going to pick the mermaid. So here's a picture of the mermaid, picture of the client. And on the back are some things that the client wants or the client likes. Um, here we have a picture of... Here we have a picture of... I'm not having that discussion right now. We have... The, the mermaid is doing something with the seashell and there are dolphins. Here we have some things that the mermaids have collected. And I'm not sure what this is, but it might be a picture of the mermaid in, in real life. I don't know. So let's do the mermaid. That's going to be our client. So then you go on to the design projects. And these are um, you devising 30 design projects covering five design categories was an interesting challenge. This section describes each design project, why we chose to include it, and considerations for each one. So these are the things that you will be designing for the mermaid or any of the other characters. There's a, I'll see, there's a whole lot of them here. So this can easily, easily be a whole semester or um, depending on how much they like it and get into it, a whole year worth of art curriculum. Okay, so first it designs the different types of design projects. There are five of them. There are inventions, gadgets, buildings, clothing, and vehicles. And each of those has cards as well. We have, oh, here are the design projects. All right. They're in another part of the box. They're actually up here. Three plus three is 12. Liam, please stop. Did y'all see that? Did that come up? I have to put a timer on my phone every day so that we remember to take our uh, medications. Okay, so we have, this is our design project. We have gadgets. These are the buildings. See, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have design projects, also six, I believe. Yep, there's six of each. These are the uh, clothing. And then these are the vehicles. There are five categories, six challenges in each. So there are 30 challenges. So theoretically, for each character, there are 30 things you can design. And you don't have to go in any special order. Um, your child picks what they want, when they want it. Um, it would be really cool if you devise some kind of... Like a, like a lab experiment notebook, only a design notebook for these. That way you can keep track of what you've done already. Um, so much you can do here. And what it, do, it does come with, let's get some tissue paper on it here. Tissue paper. These, it comes with this, this pad, this drawing pad. And it's like, I don't know how to explain this. This graph paper kind of turned on its side. Can you see that? And it's got place up here to put your design name. Um, the extraordinaire that you are designing for, your project, your design and the date. And it's just, I don't know how many pages are here, maybe a hundred. So this will definitely get you started. So we've got a mermaid. And then you pick a design project. Um, well, I'm going to pick from clothing because sometimes the mermaids have clothing challenges. So the clothing uh, projects that we can pick from are protective clothing, pajamas, headwear, 
a ceremonial outfit, footwear, and sportswear. My favorite. Your favorite sportswear? So your kid can blindly pick or, you know, intentionally pick again. I'm going to blindly pick. We're going to pick it's mermaid, mermaid, mermaid. It's, we have to. It's half manatee, half mermaid. It is. It's a mermaid on a manatee. We are going to pick a ceremonial outfit for our mermaid. That's awkward. All right. So then we go through that part and... Okay, it explains it on here that each of the card has different cues. Right, here's a ceremonial outfit. So here are some design cues. Burial. Um, I don't know, maybe a wedding or something. Holidays. Um, celebrations. What is that? That's a woman pouring tea. So maybe everyday events. So there's some different cues on there. there this Weddings. is a uh, military ceremony. New baby. Wedding. We got poor wireless connection. Sorry, guys. It zipped down on me for a minute there. Um, a coronation, a wedding, flowers. I don't know. Do so there know? are different things in here. Ah, and in the book, it's going to explain what each of those are and why they're there. All right. So let's go to the clothing. It explains each design area in depth so we have is that timer going to go off Probably. no turn it off 11 minutes liam this yeah. xbox has been like awful because we've had two days and they're fighting over it already which is why we got rid of the last xbox we had so here we are in clothing we picked Ceremonial outfit. So you read the information, which is an outfit to be worn to a significant occasional event. We included this project as each element of a ceremonial outfit must serve some meaning. Think symbolic decoration, above function, and accessories for adornment. A ceremony might be a solemn occasion. Boy, this is pretty good vocabulary too. A solemn occasion or a celebration. Consider how gender and culture define tradition and norms in the extraordinaire's world. Will your design conform or break the rules? All right. So we're going to mermaid in a ceremonial outfit. So it does that for every single design challenge. Here you go. And there are, like I said, there are five, by, there are five topics, and each of them there are six challenges. So 30 total. Think cards. Okay, these are the ones I haven't looked at yet, so I'm not sure what these ones are. It says... We think you can never ask too many questions. That's why the think cards sit at the heart of our user-centered design approach. In this section, discover the thinking behind the cards and processes. So let's take a peek at these. Again, there is bye, honey, one um, group of cards for each topic. So there's one for gadgets, inventions, buildings, clothing, and vehicles. Again, we are doing clothing, so let's open those. All right. So each of these has some kind of cue on it for what you need to think about. This is think context. What other things will the extraordinaire be carrying when wearing your design? What else will they be wearing? So if you are doing a ceremonial outfit for occasional use, what other things might they have with them? Um, the mermaid, would they carry something to protect their fins? Would they have something to transport them on land? Um, do they have something to translate their voice? You know, that sort of thing. Then that's research, design, and improve. So that was research. Design is silhouette, line, and form. Consider the shape your design will take. Will it enhance or disguise the extraordinaire's physical attributes? And then improve. Think desirability. How will you decorate your design so that the extraordinaire will like it even more and feel even better wearing it? So this is going to explain how you use these cards. 
says, design is rarely the result of a sudden eureka moment, as all designers know. It involves the constant reworking of an idea, posing and answering questions until an optimal, but never perfect, solution finally takes form out of hours of research, idea generation, examining of constraints, sketching, and iterating. So this tells you how to use the research and the design, and it tells you, like in the design, it tells you the different facets of design, things to consider, things to uh, think about. And it covers all of them, from inventions to clothing to the gadgets that improve. And then sketch your ideas. It gives you a basic how-to on how to sketch your ideas, how to use the uh, sketch pad that comes with that. All right, and it says it gives you two layout options. Now, obviously, if your child is very artistic, they may have their own layout, their own way of doing things, and of course, they can do it that way. But here's one layout where you do the, in the middle is your main design concept, and then around the sides are different improvements and stages, or gives you this one, stage one, two, and three. So it even tells you how to use your sketch pad. All right. Then here are some neat ideas here. It tells you about line thickness, about hatching and shading, um, how to annotate with arrows, sketching tips. So it gives you some of the tools of the trade that professional designers use to express their design on paper. And it says there's more than one way. As I said earlier, great design is about good ideas, not about being an amazing artist. The goal is to have fun and experiment. This is play. I love that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's about approaching a new idea in a new way. So um, we have some new watchers. Just going to flip this through here. This is Design Studio Pro. It's available for around $80 on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble. If you get it at timberdoodle.com, just search for it or go to www.tinyurl.com slash designstudiopro. You are going to find it for a little bit cheaper, a couple bucks cheaper. And you know what? When you're homeschooling and you have to pay for every single bit of your supplies, those couple of bucks really come in handy. And I really like Timberdoodle. Just, I mean, I dare you just to buy one thing there. I dare you. <laughs> you can't. They have so many unique things, and it's all hands-on. And that's perfect for my kids. They have games. They have um, things like this. They have laser mazes, all kinds of cool, cool stuff. And they carry religious and secular. They have entire box curriculums of religious, secular, or build your own, if you like. Or you can buy by the piece. Really liking them. All right, so, and then we get into the presenting your ideas. It tells you how to name your ideas and how to, oh, tells you how to make a presentation. So if you are presenting your design to a board of directors, let's say, or to your client, it gives you tips. It says um, how long to keep your presentation, how to start your presentation, what to say to describe the problem, step by step. It tells you how to get in front of your client or, you know, the board directors or whomever you need to and how to present this. So you've got the art element, but you also have some public speaking in there. And how cool is that? Because when your child, and this program is for 16 plus, when your child gets to that age, they're going to start thinking about things like college or uh, job interviews. So the public speaking skills and knowing how to present a problem and their solution are extremely important. They're very valuable to have. When they get into their college acceptance interview or when they go to interview for that first or second job, or even when you know if they're going to the car dealership to look for a car, these public speaking skills will be well, the cat is sitting on my computer, guys. Get off my computer. Oh, my cat is such a brat. She's like this old lady, so I feel really bad calling her a brat, but she's such a brat. She bites. She doesn't scratch. She bites. What kind of cat bites? And she eats my palm tree, my lovely palm tree. She eats it. All right, so 
the public speaking skills is part of this curriculum that is very, very valuable and not something that you normally find in an art curriculum. All right, and then awards and innovations. And you have award cards here. And I haven't looked at these either. Let's see, these are, all right, first, you capture and keep your designs in one place with the Extraordinaire's digital portfolio. This is cool because as any artist is going to tell you, it is all about their portfolio. When my son was dual enrolling, he was required to keep a paper portfolio. And it was this big um, like briefcase almost. And you kept your designs in there. It's great for on-campus learning. But for something like this, uh, you can keep a digital portfolio and it is a free app that comes with the program and it's available for um, iThingies on the uh, Apple's iTunes App Store or available for Android on Google Play. And you just search for Extraordinaire's Design Studio. Everything is on this card. It comes with the award cards. So you take a photo of your design, you present it, you tag and explain your designs with 60 seconds of audio or 400 characters of text, and then you share it if you want to. You can share your best design with others. So that's all there. So here are the awards, and I don't know how you pick the awards that you get. It'll explain it in this book, and the reason it has it says, using the award cards will help to focus feedback. The award cards are written in such a way that the award goes to the design, not the designer, which is something that happens in real life. If you invent some wonderful um, chemical that you know keeps clothes clean, you don't get the credit. The company you work for gets the credit. The design gets the credit. So. By focusing on the design and not the designer, this avoids making the feedback personal. The card prompts you to analyze why you are presenting each award. So, you can have, the child can have another child, or the parent, or I don't know, a random stranger off the internet, whatever you want. I don't suggest random strangers off the internet. You know, internet safety first, guys. So, the you present the award card. And this one says, the award for most useful design goes to dot, dot, dot. Give this award to a design where the solution really fits the needs of the extraordinaire in their world. Look for one that demonstrates balance between form and function. So you would look at one of the designs that you made, one of the, the ceremonial outfits that you made for the mermaid using your think cards to help guide you through the process, you would find one that was the most useful. And this award would go to that design because dot, dot, dot. Now, in the book here, I lost my page. It was yellow. It tells you what to do if you're a multiplayer, which means if you have more than one child doing this, or if you do it with your child, or single player. So if you only have one child who's going to be used this, it says even the best designers can be their biggest critics. The awards cards give you permission to celebrate your work. Give these award cards to your own design concepts will help you appreciate what is working and where there is room for improvement. So think about this like American Idol. I don't think that shows on TV anymore. But somebody sings and you have the three judges and you have the judges who say this was good, but you need to do this. Or you could be really good if you had some professional instruction. So there's some feedback. Don't be Simon. There is some feedback on these cards that help you analyze your design, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, what works, what doesn't work, and helps you create more. So you can go through the whole process. You have... Let's count how many characters we have. One, two, three. Well, that's cute. A rap star. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You have 23 unique characters that you will design for. You have five different project areas, six projects per area. So you have 30 
possible projects that you will design for these 23 unique characters. And then, when you're all done, you go through the awards and you analyze what you designed. And then, you put it all on the digital portfolio and you go. You get everything you need here. You have the textbook, which is perfect for children who are visual. Um, it's very succinct, it's to the point, it tells you exactly the information you need to know without extra words, and then pictures to guide you along the way. You have your think cards to help you with the projects. You have your project designs. You have, oh, I'm sorry, there's 24 characters. Here's a robot, he got stuck underneath the sketch pad, which comes with it. And not only that, you get markers. These are blue markers, which, and it explains it in the book, why they're blue. It's what the professionals use. You've got a thicker one and you've got a finer one here. They come with it. And everything fits in these nice little cubbies in the box. This is really a really exciting art curriculum for your child if your child is thinking about going into the art field or if your child just enjoys art and is looking for a challenge if you have a sketcher or let's say you have a child who just needs an art credit a high school art credit um, as an elective and you don't know what to do with them. This is fabulous. You can get an entire year or a semester if you don't want to do the whole thing, credit, a whole credit or a half a credit for art and elective, which is kind of hard to do sometimes, for under $80. This is almost as good as having an art tutor in your home guiding your child through the process because this book is Fantastic. I can't believe the information that is in this book. It explains everything, every step of the way. So if you are needing an art elective, this kit, I am loving it. And this is the kit for 16 plus. There is a kit. This is Design Studio Pro. It's available at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, or at Timberdoodle for the best price. It's for 16 plus. If you have a child who is between 12 and 16, um, you can get the regular Design Studio Pro. It is av also available at the same places. Um, you can go get it at Timberdoodle at uh, www.tinyurl.com slash Design Studio Pro. That'll take you right to the Timber Doodle link, link, or you could go to Timber Doodle and just type in Design Studio Pro, and you'll find it. This, um, I'm really, really happy with this, and I can see that my children are going to have a lot of fun with this. So, if you want to do a follow up, maybe I'll do another follow up video after we have a couple of projects finished. Um, we are going to be blogging about our experience at homeschoolgameschool.com. We don't have it up there yet because we're just opening this up today and figuring it all out. But if you go there, um, you can see lots of cool things. I have so an article, the newer ones are about um, teaching geography in a fun way, and I did a live video about that too. You can see all my live videos are going to be on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash homeschool game school, click on videos. And I'm also getting them all up on YouTube, and it will be um, YouTube, the, yeah, um, Usually I have more interruptions than this too. So, but yeah, it'll be on facebook.com slash homeschoolgameschool.com under videos, or um, it'll be on YouTube. And my username on YouTube is homeschool game school. Um, it might not make as much sense watching it on YouTube simply because there's, you know, the interactive component here with comments and such, but I'm still going to put it on there and they are under my how to homeschool playlist. So again, I'm going to get ready to go. Oh, 
other things you can find at Homeschool Game School right now. Yesterday, I published an article on the questions that people ask about homeschooling. Now, we are headed into our 17th year homeschooling our children. So we have heard it all from what about socialization to how can you afford to homeschool to you must have the patient of a saint. How do you do it? So I discussed some of those questions. I think there are six. The top six questions I have been asked over the years at homeschoolgameschool.com with my answers which are not snarky at all this time they're really not so uh, we've got that there and there is an article about how to make geography fun for your children and there is a corresponding video I have to link the video to the blog post hopefully by the time you're watching this I'll have that done um, and I, I love some games some books some YouTube channels that your children will love and I I put resources for children all the way from age four up to college level um, so and later today I hope to have it finished I am creating a lab record notebook um, we used to have this wonderful lab record notebook from Pear Educational, and I loved it. It was so great. It was like exactly everything my children needed, um, but they don't make it anymore. And I contacted Heidi Pear, who owns the company, and she said they sold out and they're not making it anymore. <sighs> so what am I supposed to do? Well, I made my own. Uh, it is not nearly as nice as Heidi's was. Hers was so wonderful and planned out just so. I don't have those skills, but I did make a lab record notebook for my children. So I'm hoping to finalize all the details on that and get that up today for a free download. Free. Um, so hopefully we'll get that up there. Uh, speaking of free downloads, if you are studying ancient Egypt, go to homeschoolgameschool.com, search for the word Egypt, or find it under the games tab, and you can find a free printable board game um, about ancient Egypt. Uh, we did that a couple years ago. We studied ancient Egypt in depth, and the way we do history is we tend to pick a time period or a person and we'll spend several months to a year, maybe even two years, learning about that. We really immerse ourselves. We read books. We watch video shows. We do hands-on projects. We go on field trips. And about, I guess it was about three years ago now, we did Ancient Egypt. And um, when you search for Egypt on the website, you'll find some of our crafts as well. We did cuneiform tablets. We did uh, hieroglyphics. Oh, we made these really cool um, cartouche bookmarks. Um, which really cool. Um, but you will find a free printable game. And the neat thing about this is my kids made the game. It was, we don't, we don't test here. And, uh, it was kind of our project and project, right? Um, so they created this game. They came up with the questions on their own. They researched the questions on their own. And that's a really great way to assess your child's knowledge of a subject without uh, testing them and it is storage almost full again. Oh, all right. I'm gonna have to fix that So it's available for free download at homeschool gameschool.com. We will have our posts and updates about the design studio pro soon In the meantime Check it out at homeschoolgameschool.com, facebook.com slash homeschoolgameschool. We also have a group on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash homeschoolgameschool. Um, we are on Instagram as Meg is happy. Homeschool Game School was too long of a name. We are on Pinterest, pinterest.com slash HS game school. You can get those links also from the website homeschoolgameschool.com. We talk about enriching your child's education with games and hands-on activities like the Design Studio Pro. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Um, if you did not check the uh, listen to the beginning of this uh, live broadcast where I talked about resources where you can help the Orlando community after the shooting massacre, please go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash homeschool game school. Click on videos and click this video. Uh, today is June 14th and watch the first two minutes. I give you three resources where you can directly help the Orlando LGBT youth population without, you know, spending your entire savings. So I will talk to you all later. I will be back with some more reviews and unboxings real soon. Bye.